time for worship. I just all of us sang so beautifully. And what did we say? I live for you alone. Is it true? I give you my heart and I give you my soul. Lord, I only live for you. Is that true? Because your names are recorded in the book of life. 
the record of death. Be happy about it. So that is very, very important. You know, many times we are bothered about being members of the visible church, but we must ensure that we are members of the invisible church, his church. You know, it is very, very important for us. And the church, the spiritual body of Christ, is formed as believers. You know, the word when you use baptize or in Greek, it is immersion. Okay. So this church is formed as believers are immersed by Christ with the Holy Spirit. The moment you believe Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior, the moment we are born again, we are baptized with the Holy Spirit. That act of the Holy Spirit, baptism of the Holy Spirit, makes us members of His church. Because of that. You know, and when we say baptized into Christ's body, what it means? That means all the believers are immersed into the body of Christ, the church, by means of the Holy Spirit. And there can be no believer who is not spirit baptized. Okay? And the baptism of the Holy Spirit took place on the day of Pentecost. When the Holy Spirit descended upon the 120 believers who were gathered in the upper room, that is the day the church was born. So from that time, we partake of that benefits of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. After that, everyone who accepts Jesus Christ, they have been baptized into his body by the Holy Spirit. You know, that is very, very important. And particularly, when we become members of the body of Christ, you know, that is the biggest blessing that one can have. Because if you look at it, what is the determining factor whether we are going to heaven or hell? What determines? Whether we are members of his body or not, that determines. You know, all those who become members of his body, their names are written, they were the only one who would be admitted there in heaven. And that is through the Son, you know. And particularly, you and I have another blessing in this. Can we read Galatians chapter 3, verse 27? Galatians. Chapter 3 verse. For all of you who were baptized into Christ, that is all of us, we are here because we believe Jesus Christ is our Lord and our Savior. Is there anyone has doubt in that? Those who are seated here? No, all of us. Okay. So for all of you, it is referring to us, who were baptized into Christ, we are all baptized into Christ, have clothed yourself with Christ. That means we have put on Christ. Is that true? Do people see Christ in us? Or when they look at me, they see money. In all his weakness and sinfulness, or do they see Christ? You know, this is a very big blessing. When you and I are back there, it's easy. I like the first song that you sang. I don't live by what I see. I don't live by what I feel. We sang. Do you remember the first song? We live by the facts. We don't live by the feelings. Feelings are subject to change. The facts never change. And we don't live by what we see. We live by faith. what we don't see. Now, that is what this is. Now, have you seen Jesus Christ coming on to you, putting on to you? Have you seen anybody? In this, what this book says. So we need to live by that fact. I am having Jesus Christ put on to me. You know, Jesus Christ can only give the promise. Again, as we said last week, I am 
If you say, I don't think that, I have not seen it, I will continue to live the way I want, even God cannot help us. Why am I saying this? This will give us the new power to overcome our flesh, our sin. Sometimes we think, so and so is my biggest enemy. You know who is our biggest enemy? My biggest enemy is myself, my flesh. Because that flesh, that self, constantly urges me to live against the God's word. You want to go to Filipino fellowship? Come on, man. You are not that old. Relax. Take a mug of beer. Nice weather. Sit outside. Have. There is time for you to go to church. This is not the time. My flesh constantly wants me to gratify its desires. So don't ever think any other human being is your enemy. Your enemy is your own self. Because enemy is from within. We are finding it difficult to fight against. You can fight with your neighbor very well. Can you fight with your wife? Why you want the men are keeping quiet? They can. They can, but after fighting, will they survive? Yeah. See, outside forces you can deal with. But when the battle comes from within, it is difficult. Because this battle is from within us. Can we go on sinning? We read in the Romans 6 1. That is what this flesh wants me to do. Hey, don't waste God's grace. The more you sin, the more God's grace is. Go on sinning. Now, today there is a teaching called hyper grace. Those hyper grace fellows, they even say there is no judgment. It's all hyper grace. God has opened the doors to heaven to everybody. That is not true. You know, so it is very, very important because when you and I are baptized into Christ, we have put on Christ. That is the promise, that is the blessing the word of God says. But if you and I do not believe, we cannot live by it. Can you imagine what a blessing it is having Jesus Christ being put on us? You know, that is very, very, and that is why, you see, when you put on Christ, Christ, you become one with him. You become union, united. What blessings can be better than that? And then, if you look at, positionally speaking, we have put on Christ, okay? That is heavenly perspective. But what is the earthly perspective of putting on Christ? That means, practically, we need to put on Christ before the people of this world to see. The way you talk, the way you think, the way you behave, what you are projecting, you are only projecting not yourself, but the projecting the person whom you have put on, Jesus Christ. When that doesn't happen, something is wrong with us. That is why I keep saying that we are happily settling for our ordinary life when the scripture offers an exciting and fruitful life. We are saying we don't want this life. Now we go to work, we need something, when the time comes we will die and go. Is that what you and I want or not? So think about this first blessing, baptized into Christ's body, that means you become one with him. And when you become one with him, you are given that new power to overwhelm the flesh. Several times you read in the New Testament, especially in the book of Romans, Galatians, live by the Spirit, Holy Spirit, don't live by the flesh. 
live by the Spirit. How to live? Because we have put on Christ. The Word of God says, believe. You and I must know who we are, my dear people. That is important. See, we don't realize, even though this truth is so exciting, but how all of you look like as if there is no light. This fellow is waiting to scream, he is coming and screaming, let him scream. I won't be like this. My dear people of God, this truth should exist. Let's read Romans 13 verse 14. Romans 13 verse 14. Rather, clothe yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. Clothe yourself. Because you have been clothed when you are born again, you are baptized into Christ's body. When you are baptized into Christ's body in the church, you are clothed with Christ. He said, claim that, think that. Because it's very, very important, my dear people of God. We must know who we are. You know, I was reading about Queen Victoria. When she was small, she never studied properly. She was not a child. She never listened to the parents. So, parents were trying to tell her other things. They could not succeed. They were very worried. Because she was designated to be the future queen. And how is she going to be? But she had a nanny. So one day this nanny took her for a walk in the garden of the palace. And she spoke to her. She said, Ma'am, although she's a child, she's going to be a future queen. You must know who you are. You are not a child, you are a queen. You must remember you are a queen. You may not be queen now, but you are going to be queen. You must remember that. So you must be disciplined, you must study, you must behave properly because you are going to be queen. Remember you are a queen. The biographers say that word changed. Oh, I'm going to be queen one day. I'm going to be queen one day. Now, what about the Bible says about us? When Christ comes, we are going to be co heirs, co rulers. You are going to be kings and queens. But we say, yeah, very humble here, we don't want that kind of person. Because we don't realize who we are. That is why you say, clothe yourself, but do not think about gratifying the desires because you are given a new power. That is the first blessing. Already for me, it is not so. Okay, second blessing. You buried with Christ. Not only baptized into Christ's body, the second blessing is buried with Christ. You know, that is what we are going to look into Romans 6. You know, and particularly, this refers to water baptism. You know, Romans, we do not know that as many of you as were baptized into Christ Jesus who were baptized into his death, we are identifying ourselves when we are baptized. We identify ourselves with the death, the burial, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is what we say. Because when we accept Jesus Christ, there is no external symptoms. Correct? It is an internal change. So, by going through water baptism, what we declare, Look, this is what happened to me internally, and I am publicly confessing through this act. Is there any special power in that act of baptism? Nothing. Does water have any special power? Because if you and I are not transformed internally, how many times you go into the water? 
there will be only one difference that is your clothes will be wet other than that there won't be any difference you will go out go in as a dry sinner you will come out as a wet sinner i don't know whether all of you have been baptized in case if you know the lord personally if you are not a baptized please let us know you should obey in what baptism to tell the world that i am a child of god now i am born again you know it's very important and and particularly when you and i say this what we what we do that is that when we are buried that means when you go under the water for few seconds you are there that is referring to the burial you are identifying yourself with the burial of Christ that time what do you say all that i was as a sinful son of the first adam what i do all that has been put to death on the cross he paid the penalty everything has been put to death on the cross so when you come out of the water what do, what do we say it is no longer who i am correct but christ who lives in me as we read in galatians chapter 2 verse 20 that is what we say so because when you and i come out of that water that we identify with the resurrection of christ when jesus christ was resurrected he was raised to life he was not the same jesus because the power of god with which he was raised to life was upon him the glory of and he said so that you and i are raised for what so that we may lead a new life yeah. that is the purpose it is not that after taking water baptism then you go back to your old life no baptism is not a ritual that is why i keep saying that there is no power in that act many people think that okay if i go to baptism everything is all right definitely not definitely not you know i do i take groups to israel one lady brought a bottle of water from the jordan river and when i was serving as a pastor in the mandir church i was baptizing for 30 young people and last minute something made us miss her house is very close to the church she said pastor can you can you please hold on for a minute i said for what no 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 we just hold on delay for five minutes and she went running and she brought this bottle of water i did not understand and then she emptied that water into the baptism tank oh well, now you baptize i said what is it no this is the water i brought from jordan i said this is the same dirty water man she was very upset she was very upset every year i i take i baptize people in river jordan every time but i always tell them nothing special in this nothing special in this river jordan water if you have not repented this water cannot make you holy let's be very careful you know sometimes you and i can be very sentimental about all these things but that doesn't help us in any way it's a feeling nice feeling just one bottle of jordan river water what is what difference is going to make Of that, they said it has still the smell of Jesus. 
So most of the East European, Czechoslovakia, Germany, I'm sorry, Romania and Slovenia, you know, all those people, most of the Catholic uh, country people, they, they bring a special cloth. And they will sit down. Why? 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 Because they carry the smell. But here it says, you put on Christ, you don't have to wipe. Yeah. And they won't get up. There's a long queue. Tourists are waiting. Mm -hmm. These people, that time only, they'll become very religious. They will not get up, they'll keep wiping. You know? And when I went into Church of Nativity, the church in Bethlehem, where Jesus Christ once born, inside that they have a small star kind of thing. There one man was sitting and closed his eyes when hundreds of people waiting outside. I have to tell him, gentlemen, please get up. You can't, one man cannot go and sit and close your eyes and enjoy it when hundreds of people waiting because they close it. They close the church. You know, you and I can become sentiment. That's what I'm saying. We don't live by feelings. We live by facts. We must understand the feelings will never save us. They are subjective. You know, it's very, very important because it is no longer we who live. It's Christ that lives in us. This is the second blessing that, that we have. That is why Colossians chapter 3 verse 3. Colossians chapter 3 verse 3. For you die, not physical death, are we dying to sin? And it says, your life is now hidden with Christ in God. That means, our personal life is hidden. That is not seen by people. It is only in Christ because it is not me who is living anymore, my life. It is Jesus Christ who lives in me. Only that life is seen. That is how we are supposed to be. That is how we are supposed to be. That is why Jesus Christ says, You are my witness. When they see you, they don't see you, they see me. Only by looking at you, they will know how do I work. The way we speak, they will know how Jesus Christ. You know, one of the primary purpose of Jesus Christ coming is that to reveal God, the word of God. If Jesus Christ had not come, we would not have known how lovingly you can look at somebody. Can you imagine that scene when, when the woman was caught in other place? How lovingly he must have looked at her when everyone was ready to scorn her. Beautifully, you know, imagine that scene. He would have said, I'm not condemning you. Go, live the life yourself. Live a new life. If we had not done that, we would not have known how God looks like. But now, when He ascended into heaven, that is what the confidence He had in all of us. I am going, but you represent me on this earth until I come. That is why He said, You are my ambassadors, you are my witnesses. Wherever you go, that aroma of Christ. In this country, we give much importance to perfume. Correct? And when the ladies pass through, you can smell. Correct? We all. Because we don't want to smell wrongly. But Jesus Christ says, if you have put on me, my aroma will be felt by you. That wonderful smell of mine. Is that true of us? I'm just asking you plenty of questions so that you will ask yourself as much as I ask myself. So, new power was given, new life is given. The third thing is the new hope. Blessed Lord, Sister, could you please put Titus chapter 2, verse 13? Titus chapter 2, verse 13.
looking for the blessed hope, glorious appearing. While we wait for the blessed hope, what is the blessed hope? The appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. This blessed hope is a general reference to the second coming of Christ, to our bodily resurrection, and also to the eternal life. You know, this is the most important blessing of salvation in relation to God the Son is the hope of eternal life. You know, whether we know other verses or not, at least all of us would know John 3.16, right? For God so loved the world. Let's say without the referring, can, can we say by heart? That he gave us. Whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Everlasting life, the life that never ends. You know, that is the blessed hope. If you read John chapter 10, 22 to 28, if you read, that is the feast of dedication. So Jesus Christ went into the temple. Some Jewish people caught him. Hey, why don't you tell me? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus Christ said, I've been telling you, you people don't believe. The works that I do in my Father's name is the proof that I am the one who is the promised Messiah. But you don't believe. He says, why you don't believe? See, he says, I did tell you, but you do not believe. The works that you do in my Father's name testify about me. It's 26. Next verse, please. But you do not believe. You know why? Because you are not my sheep. And then 27. This is, he is talking about all of us. My sheep, that is you and me. Listen to my voice. And I know them. They follow me. See how confidently he talks about us. They are my sheep. And they listen to my voice. When I speak then they listen. And I know them, each one of them personally. And they follow me. And then the crux of this, 28, I give them eternal life. And what happens? They shall never perish. And no one will snatch them from the fire. Yeah. Hallelujah. He says, I give them eternal life. They shall never perish. And no one can snatch them from my hand. They are secure in my hand. What a blessing it is. That is the blessed hope. You and I look for security everywhere. But the real security is that I am in the hands of my Savior. And no one can snatch me out of his hands. I am safe. I am secure. Hallelujah. And I will never perish. This is not any apostle's word. This is the words of Christ. What I give them, I give them eternal life. My dear people of God, this is very, very important. Look at the way the apostle John puts it so beautifully and categorically. First John, first John chapter 5 verse 11. 1st John chapter 5 verse 11 and this is the testimony what is the testimony God has given us eternal life and this life is where the one who has the son has life the one who doesn't have the son doesn't have life very good that's what I think verse 12 says. This is the testimony that God has given us eternal life and this life is in His Son. That is the blessed hope that you and I have. 
And many people say, like this, I progress, fellows. This eternal life is for everybody. Definitely not. If anyone comes to preach that, don't believe that. It is not. It is only for those who know Jesus Christ. You know, there was an old lady living in a small lane next to the main road. And during rush hours, most of the traffic used to use that small lane to avoid the major traffic. So the road was damaged. And when people came to repair the road, they put the boat, no entry. This old lady was worried, how am I going to take my car? If I want to go to Mall, Lulu Mall, how am I going? I cannot take my car because no entry. But then, when she came close to the boat, she saw another line written down, access only for the residents. It's no entry for others, but access for residents only. That is your name. Amen. Those who live in it, those who reside in it. It is no entry boat for others. This lady said, I have no barrier, I can drive through. That is what you and I can probably say. I have no barrier. I have no barrier. You know, I don't know how many of you have read Dr. Mitchell's writings. Amazing man, God. They asked him, one day after his meeting, one man, a young man walked up to him. And I asked him, Dr. Mitchell, you are talking so much about the heaven, eternal life. What will happen when you go there, if someone stops you and says you cannot enter, what will you do? This Dr. Mitchell said, I will push him aside and I will tell him, I am the one Jesus died for and I have access. Amen. You cannot stop me. I am the one who died and he died to give you this life and you have no one that is a new hope that is in the house my dear people of God that's a big big blessing that is why if you look at Isaiah chapter 12 when God's children are going through spiritual desert journey prophet Isaiah says come and discover the wells of salvation Verse 3, Isaiah chapter 12, verse 3. I will close with that. With joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. With joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. God has already dug that well. That well is full of fresh and cool water. As we are going through the spiritual journey, he says, come and draw, you are my child, you are my daughter, you are my son. Come and draw water from this wells of salvation. Come and draw joy to me because you are entitled. You are entitled. Yes. My dear people of God, when you and I think about blessings of salvation in relation to God the Son, Baptized into Christ's body, new power that is given to you and given to me. Buried with Christ, new life. The third blessing, blessed hope, the new hope, hope of eternal life. He says, Come and draw. My well is full, it will never run dry. You come joyfully and draw. And how can we do that every day? Let us confess and repent. Let us ask God. And let us always come back to this well and draw with joy water from the wells of salvation. Amen. God bless you.